la blessed people the Lord Jehovah Yahweh the Lord Jehovah Elohim the Lord Jehovah Kabodi the Lord Jehovah Maoz Jehovah Magen the Lord thy shield Jehovah Adonai the Lord God Almighty Jehovah Sabaoth the Lord of hosts Jehovah El Gibor the mighty God the mighty mighty God of Israel the mighty God of heaven the Lord Jehovah Elohim the eternal creator of all men all the heavens all the universe he has spoken with me, beloved people. Jehovah HaShofet, Jehovah HaMelech, the Lord, the King, the Eternal King. He has spoken with me these past two days, culminating into the conversation that took place this past night. And, uh, beloved people, Jehovah HaShofet, the Lord, the Judge, Jehovah Goel, the Lord, our Redeemer, the Lord, Jehovah Chezek, the Lord, our Strength, Eli, the Lord, my God, Elion, the Lord, Most High, He has spoken with me these past two days and uh, culminating into the conversation that took place this night. And uh, the Lord has spoken with me at a very, very critical time in the history of the church. This is a very powerful moment in the history of the entire church. In fact, it's a historic time. This is a monumental hour in the church. This is the time when the Lord has now attacked. He has invaded the earth. There's a big invasion of heaven upon the earth at this hour. A tremendous invasion has taken place here. And at this hour, beloved people, the Lord is now dealing with the church. He's dealing with the church in a manner never seen before. Jehovah Yasha, the Lord thy Savior, he is now handling the matters of eternity with the church at this hour. This is the hour when the Lord has opened up now a bigger conversation on the eternity of the Christian believer, the eternity of the church, the eternity of the church of Christ, the bride of Christ, the eternity of the nation, the entire body of Christ, the eternity of the body of Christ. And at this hour, beloved people, it's an awesome time because there is a manifestation, the physical manifestation of the kingdom of God. The nations have beheld the glorious staircases of heaven. Your eyes at this time have beheld eternity. So nobody can dissuade you from eternity right now as we speak. Nobody. Nobody can ever dissuade you from eternity now as we speak. Because your eyes have seen the staircases of everlasting life. At uh, this hour, you have touched. In Lima, Peru, they touched. The church literally touched the physical, tangible crystals from the throne of God Almighty, Jehovah Elion, the Lord Most High. Physical objects from heaven touched. And squeezing in their fingers, giving their children, picking them the way people in the wilderness, the children of Israel, were picking manna. So this is a very awesome time. Monumental time, tremendous time, historic time in the life of the church. In the life of the body of Christ, beloved people. In the life of the gospel. Now finally we are seeing the fruition. The final objective of the gospel is going to be accomplished. And the hunger is palpable. We are overjumped by many nations. Every nation is now crying, please come, please come, please come. We all 
also want to hear about the glorious tale. We also want to be rebuked. We also want to repent. We want to see eternity. We want to hear what the Lord has spoken about entry. So this is an hour of hunger, beloved people. Hunger for entry. Hunger for eternity. Hunger for righteousness. Hunger for holiness. So this is what is going on, beloved people. It's a tremendous moment. It's a shocking time. A, perplex, a moment of perplexity in the house. And you can see the enigma with which the Lord is now is, is propelling this mission that he has launched on the earth. The agenda with his two prophets, you can see the way he's executing it with sovereignty of God, with the sovereignty and authority of God, and the enigma. While it was hidden, now it's open. Everybody can enter. And so it is in the backdrop of all this tremendous visitation happening across the earth. Now the entire four ends of the earth are focused on one mission, eternity. When he wrote in the sky and he concealed the writing and he only revealed to me the writing because I can read the translation and then now everything is all of a sudden open to everybody to enter eternity. It has now been revealed. And the Lord has shown me the meeting that is coming up in Nakuru. In these past two days, he spoke with me about a tremendous, tremendous historic visitation that is coming to Nakuru, Kenya. And I see a lot of flight tickets. China alone probably will see 230 flight tickets and many nations passed coming to Nakuru. But the Lord has spoken with me in advance about the tremendous historic, super glorious, grand mega historic visitation that is coming up in Nakuru. And I see massive, massive, massive healing the moment the Lord brings these two prophets right at the entrance to the meeting. It will be absolutely unbelievable, the visitation. I see many, many, many cripples get up, many blind see many deaf. It is going to be a shocking visitation in the history of the church, in the history of the Bible. We are sitting on the verge of history, beloved people. How awesome. How tremendous that the Lord can still speak in His grace, in His mercy and favor unto the church, trying to win her after lowering the glorious stairs in the sky. And this past night, the Lord took me to the meeting in Nakuru, and from a distance, he lifted me up into the sky. He lifted me up so high above the universe, into the realm of heaven. And then I saw the two prophets of the Lord ministering at the altar of the Lord in Nakuru. I saw them ministering in the historic, super glorious, grand, mega revival service that has never, ever been seen in the history of the church, in the history of creation, in the history of the earth. It will be a record setter. But when the Lord lifted me up above the universe into the heavens, then he spoke with me what we can share here, and then he asked me to look at the meeting, and I saw the two tremendous prophets of Revelation 11 ministering there. And then I saw one of them coming, and the voice of the Lord said, Look, Moses, the friend of God, is coming. Within the meeting, he separated the two. And as he came, then again he showed me the other one, and said, Look, Elijah, the dreadful prophet of Yahweh, is standing at the altar of the Lord. My voice. Tremendous time. And this is coming in the backdrop of what has just happened and shocked and stunned the entire globe from Lima, Peru. Lima, Peru. And now this is happening, beloved people. That the most historic, super glorious, grand, mega revival meeting ever happened on the earth is going to take place in Nakuru very shortly. 
In just about a month and some days, it will take place there. There is going to be a visitation of God the Father in the meeting. And then from heaven, the two prophets of the Lord, when the Lord was speaking with them, they could see themselves ministering at the altar. The enigma of God, the sovereignty of God. God can do what he wants with his two servants. He is a sovereign God. He can do anything. He can heal people. He can do wonders. This is the moment at which the heavens are open and there is no limit at this hour. And those whose ears will be open, their hearts open, they will partake of the gains of eternity. They will partake of the glorious revival promised. The awesome hour of visitation. And those whose ears are closed, those are the ones that were destined to another place. Remember, not everybody gets to enter heaven. But from heaven, then the Lord showed his two servants the cloud of God the Father. He showed them God the Father coming to visit the meeting in Akuru. And then from where we were, we could see the cloud coming. I thought I saw like a mushroom, more like that kind of mushroom, going up and then opening up there like a mushroom. But what shocked me most is that then at that moment, in less than, the, in less than a twinkle of an eye, higher than the speed of light by light, I don't know how many trillion fold, in a nick of time, in a flash, the two prophets were there. We were standing at the altar in Nakuru. And then all of a sudden, we realized the cloud of God, God the Father was canopy. He covered the entire altar where his two mightiest prophets were standing. And then the other age, it's amazing because the age of it, there is so high sunlight on the other age. But where he has come by the altar, he totally enveloped. You see a shadow that covers the altar of God in Nakuru, beloved people. How mighty, how powerful, how historic, how tremendous, how glorious, how eternal is this? God the Father Yahweh himself is coming to visit the meeting in Nakuru. And we were standing at the altar of the Lord. And the cloud of God came very close and canopied and covered the top of the altar. But I saw like a mushroom when I was in heaven. We saw that it was like a mushroom with a stem and then a canopy. But then we came in there. So maybe it's also going to envelop them. We don't know what the Lord can do. This is the hour of the sovereignty of God to be executed and expressed on the earth. Nobody can hold the Lord anymore on what he is capable of doing. He can do his will. Let him do as he will. So if it will be a canopy over the altar, or if it will be a canopy and the stem of the canopy envelope of the two prophets, so be it. This is the hour of visitation. Hallelujah. But we saw that the canopy, the, the, the glory, the cloud of God covered the altar, came very close and covered the altar, and there was a shadow. But it was amazing because the ages, the end of the canopy, was sunlight. So all around the field is sunlight, but here is canopy. How awesome, beloved people. And then, the Lord then brings the healing service right into this home. Right where I am calling from. Then I see the little girl that was crippled walking. I've seen she's wearing it. It looks like a bit of a whitish dress, Evie. Looked a bit, a little bit whitish, but she walked across this entire bedroom here. So he brought the meeting here live, so he lives that day already right here. And then I saw a little child, I think the eyes have opened. I see a little child whose eyes have opened. I see many people healed. I see adults that were born blind. I see crippled adults, crippled children. It is going to be a shocking visitation never seen before. I see the doctors, I saw Dr. Katipoi, and I see other doctors. I don't know why now in two meetings he shows me Dr. Katipoi. And I see other doctors. I see celebration. I see the mothers of babies that were crippled. They are rolling on the soil. They are weeping. They are running. 
away. They cannot process the fact that this five-year-old crippled child has now gotten up and is walking away. So there is going to be a mega, mega, super glorious historic visitation of Yahweh in Nakuru. God the Father is coming, the owner of heaven, the one that created heaven and admits people into eternity, the one that also takes people to hell, he is coming to visit the super glorious grand mega historic revival healing service in Nakuru. It will be awesome. It will be a splendor. It will be such a magnificent before God. And the glory, the cloud of God is coming. I have seen the Lord coming to visit his two prophets of Revelation 11. And by voice, he separated them. And then he beamed light on one of them. And by voice from heaven I saw. He said, look at Moses, the friend of God. And he was walking towards the front, so seeing the face. And the other one was standing at the altar looking a bit side like this. Then he said, look at Elijah, the dreadful prophet of the Lord. What an awesome time for the Lord to execute his agenda on the earth. This time the enemy is finished. The Lord is going to set his people free, beloved people. And this is coming right on the heels of the mega the mega visitation in Lima, Peru, that has shaken, shaken the entire earth, shaken everybody on the earth. It is tremendous, the inflow of the information we're receiving across the globe. Everybody is now hungry. They want to be part of this move of God. Everybody, pastors, who everybody, pastors fellowship. Repentance is sweeping the earth now. What a beautiful time. What an awesome time in the history of the church. Hallelujah. And then this first night, there was a big conversation. The Lord Almighty speaks with them what we won't share for now until later. He speaks with them again in the same context about a meeting coming up in Apu. And then come later, daybreak, then the two prophets actually meet. They meet in this place and have a conversation in this house. Tremendous historic times in the church. The Holy Spirit of the Lord is taking over the agenda of the church on the earth at this hour. Blessed are the ears that are circumcised. Blessed are those whose hearts are not treacherous. Blessed are those whose hearts are light. They are not rock. That they may see the kingdom of glory. The kingdom of heaven. The eternity with God Almighty. The eternity of worship. The eternity of bliss. The non-stop celebration, the messengers of the Lord are now traversing the earth and they're doing the bidding of God and maximum exploits at this hour. Time is over. Scares have been lowered. How beautiful the hour in the church. There was big conversation, more of which we cannot share now. But again now the conversation where the Lord is speaking and the two prophets are standing before the Lord of all the earth. And then the Lord speaks with them. It's amazing, it's amazing. Reminding me of when before I left for Lima, Peru, then the two stood and then two holy trees did grow on each of them and they spoke to the Lord. Tremendous holy trees, massive, that reached all the way to heaven. All the way inside heaven, beyond the universe. This is the hour when the Lord is unstoppable now. The enemy must be vanquished. The enemy must be finished. Now the authority of the kingdom of God is slowly beginning to take place, to take season, to be installed, to prepare for the reign of the kingdom of God. The Messiah is coming. Beloved people, prepare the way the Messiah is coming. And for many, many, many years, my voice, all over Israel, all over the United States, he kept my voice saying, you remember Moses, you remember Moses, and the cloud covered him. And then on this other side, he also spoke to Elijah. He said, tremendous enigma, beloved people. Look at Lima, Peru now. Look at the many cripples going to be set free by 
by Jehovah, establishing the power of the blood, the power of the cross of Jesus. How beautiful, how awesome, how mighty. And yet at the same time, others are still in darkness. Their eyes have been closed. The Lord has not yet opened their eyes. They are still in the other denominations and churches and attempting to ignore the Lord. But look now, who can dare ignore the Lord? God the Father, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my life. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Miskabi, the Lord my high tower. Jehovah again, he is now coming, the mighty God of Israel, coming to prepare the church for the glorious coming of the Messiah. Hallelujah! A holy church, a righteous church, mature church, and now he has engaged the church onto the hidden secrets of eternity, the secrets of heaven, to mature the church now. Now she's feeding on deeper messages, feeding on greater conversations, greater visitations, greater enigmas and wonders of heaven. Maturing the bride. The king is coming, beloved people. Prepare the way, beloved people. The Messiah is coming. Big, big meetings in Nakuru. 29, healing service mega. 30th, healing service mega. 31st, the whole day to the midnight, the conference. The mega, mega conference of pastors and ministers of the gospel, and they're coming from all over the world. And then on the second, the grand mega consecration service at the Riverside Drive in Nairobi. Plus meeting the pastors, the church leaders, the presidents of pastors' fellowships coming from Italy, from Lima, Peru, from everywhere. Now that meeting takes place on the second after consecration service. It will be big. This is the time the Lord has remembered the church. May those who have ears to listen, listen to the voice of the Lord and prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. And this is also he about whom the scriptures have written when John the Baptist spoke with him at the throne and came and walked towards him and disappeared in him. What an awesome time of enigma, sovereignty, the hidden secrets of heaven are now unleashed to the church. The Lord is now handling the matters of eternity with the Christian believer. Righteousness, repentance, the return to holiness. How awesome, how mighty. And many nations will get the opportunity this time around, even in the next year, to be part of this big move. But for now, all the focus of heaven is focused on Nakuru. Grand, mega, super glorious, historic, tremendous. The visitation of God the Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, coming down. What an awesome time when the Lord is engaging directly with the bride of Christ. How powerful. How awesome. How mighty. May the Lord bless those who are here, those who are headed to eternity, repent. Repent and turn away from sin. The Messiah is coming. God the Father spoke with me just a few hours ago this past night. By voice, beloved people. The Messiah is coming. The visitations of the Lord have been lined up for the nation. The messengers of the latter visitation are walking the earth. The Lord spoke with me about the visitation of God the Father. How dreadful, beloved people. How fearful. The same cloud that led the children of Israel until they entered. Same cloud that helped them fought their enemies, gave them light at night, shielded them from the Egyptian vessels that were pursuing them, soldiers and chariots. Same cloud, same God the Father, the dreadful one of Israel, the blessed one of Israel, now coming to visit the church. The tabernacle of glory. The church has now become the tabernacle of glory. 
holiness, righteousness. Women are now changing dressing and walking holy. Young men are choosing Christ in the universities. How mighty, how powerful. May the Lord bless you to the Arama. The Messiah is coming, beloved people. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare the way for the Messiah. The King is coming. I have seen the Messiah coming. I have seen him take the charge. Oh, how I pray you become one of the numbers. Be among the number. That I saw entering eternity. Don't ever think about the great tribulation. It will be insurmountable, beloved people. The Messiah is coming. How blessed is the church that God has remembered you now. Nakuru will be historic. Nakuru will be a record breaker. Nakuru will be a kind, one of his kind. May the Lord bless those who have ears to prepare for eternity and partake of the exploits of the glory of the Lord. A visitation of God the Father himself. Shalom to now. The Messiah is coming. Shalom. Well, uh, blessed people, I now want to divulge a little bit more on the conversation this night when the Lord spoke about this tremendous visitation that is coming to Nakuru. And we know now Nakuru is going to be the epicenter of the grand mega visitation upon the face of the earth, the historic visitation of God the Father, the Lord God himself to the church. That's an amazing time. It's a tremendous unfolding in the prophetic timeline of the church and towards the zero countdown for the glorious coming of the Messiah. And uh, the Lord seems to have now come out full blaze, full blast, unstoppable because the uh, he orchestrated a conversation with the two prophets. And uh, an amazing situation. And now they have a duo. One of them was absolutely very huge and very tall, almost uh, three meters to his waist. And uh, in this conversation, and the two were standing before the Lord of all the earth the Lord Yehovah, as the Lord was giving them instruction, instruction that this mega, mega visitation of God the Father coming to Nakuru, coming unto the face of the earth. You know, now Kenya is a very unique place. Many nations covet this visitation. They look for it. Lima has just tasted it, and this, the whole nation has gone ablaze. Italy tasted it, and all Italy is longing for a second visitation with Emilia and the rest, Malpensa. Many nations of Australia is waiting. Everybody is looking for the singlest opportunity. One singlest, one single most opportunity also to be able to enter into this great move of God upon the face of the earth. But now I can divulge that yesterday was a tremendous conversation. It's a angelic conversation. It's a conversation. And you can see that the angels of the Lord are involved in this mission of God. Because only the angels of the Lord are that massive, that giant, if you read the Bible. And this is a very powerful time when God is God. Because finally he has confounded the wisdom of man. Finally he has brought the two olive trees to grow same location, and you see the cloud is visiting Moses on this side, and then Elijah is commanding heaven to open on the other side. The entire earth has now entered into perplexity. It confounded the philosophy, the theology, and it's a beautiful time because this is the moment when God is God, and the sovereignty of God is now reigning upon the church, that the Lord can now do as he wants with the church. Because the hour has come to prepare the church, and only God the Father can prepare the church. He that knows the day and the hour. 
But I just want to divulge a little more, even as he allows me. If tomorrow he does, I will continue to open up more. But in that conversation, when the two prophets of the Lord appeared before the Lord of hosts, the Lord God, then one of them was absolutely very giant. And then the Lord God spoke by voice also about his stature, the stature of the one that was giant. His conversation drew his attention also to this. And then after that, one of them walks away. And so you could see the back of his head as he's going. And then he leaves into the sky. So there's a very tremendous visitation in the church. It's a very enigmatic time. It's a beautiful time. This is the time when the religion of the cross has totally been separated from all the other idol worshippers. This is when God is God and he has come full, full throttle to do what now confounds and defeats human wisdom. Now the parochial understanding of man now at this hour, the Lord has placed man at his place that man may now take instruction from him in order to see the kingdom of glory. So I just wanted to share a bit on the angelic formation that took place this past night. And there is more conversation over time. You see the way they are ministering before the Lord of all the earth across the face of the earth. It's very dreadful. And that can only tell you that this formation has so much to speak about the dispensation after the church is taken away. And so this is a beautiful time when the Lord is now demonstrating his authority, his power, his reign. He's beginning now to install certain features about the big clash, the big campaign, the big conflict, the battle. Bataya in Spanish. Grand Guerra. It's a big fight, a big war that will take place after the church is taken away. But you can see in their formation, that it's going to be quite enigmatic after the church is taken away. It's going to be quite elusive also, and that kind of formation, then that will tell you, that it should inform you, it should really inform you of the big conflict that is ahead, and how the Lord is going to be navigating them, and their movement across that dispensation of darkness. But for now, I can only share with you that there was this angelic formation yesterday, like the one that you recorded at the Nakuru main altar, very huge, his head reaching the roof, vis-a-vis -vis the other one. That is the kind of formation that took place yesterday at their residence. And then one of them was taken up into the cloud. May the Lord bless those who have ears to hear, those whose ears are circumcised to hear the word of the Lord. Blessed are you. But woe unto those whose ears are dull to the word of God. Because now it's amazing to see some of the big names, the so-called big names of evangelism and pastors of the earth. Finally, after the Peru revival, the Peru visitation, they're writing, they're demanding to have audience with these two. So finally, the Lord has captured and captivated the hearts of the church. Now he can minister to them and to the benchmarks of heaven, the requirement for eternity. And this is a beautiful moment in the church. I see a lot of creepers walking Nakuru. I see very many little babies walking up and down. And it's amazing because he brought some of them to walk into the house. So he brought the meeting into the house. I could see them walking. It was such a shock when these two were standing before the Lord and he was ministering to them about Nakuru. And it's as though the creepers were just walking right there in the house. Is a big situation, the greater detail of which, as the Lord leads, will be revealed. May the Lord bless you. And I think that this visitation is bigger than Kenya. That's why many, many are traveling from all over the world partake of this. But blessed are you, Kenya, that the Lord has chosen this place as the platform, the launching pad. And then there you go, the exploits are big. Your cripples get up and walk as he makes this a classroom. And uh, a place at which to instruct the nations, the body of Christ, the church, the individual Christian believer. That when they see all these things, 
their hearts may be quickened to rush to these two. And when they do so, they would then receive the instruction that the Lord God, Yahweh, has now dispensed for preparation towards the glorious coming of the Messiah. May the Lord bless you, Haverim, in Hebrew, friends. May the Lord bless you, Jehovah Hashem, Haver Sheli. May the Lord bless those who hearken to the voice of the Spirit of the Lord, that they may never be failed and put to shame, but see the eternal kingdom of glory. Toda, toda Raba Erev Tov. Thank you. Well, uh, beloved people, I can divulge a little more of this conversation that took place in the night. This mighty, mighty visitation upon which the Lord God Almighty decided to come to speak to his prophets, mega, mega prophets about their upcoming meeting, the grand, mega, super, glorious, historic revival meeting in Nakuru. And then, at one point, after one of them was taken up into the sky, then the Lord God, the Lord God Almighty extended his hand, his right hand, to one of the two prophets of the Lord, And I knelt down. I immediately went down on my knees. As I held his hand, the hand of God the Father, the Lord God Almighty, the Creator, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then I laid, as I was kneeling down, and I laid my head on his hand, holding his hand, but placed my forehead on his hand. And then after that, he spoke with me. And then he lifted me up. That is where we can stop for today until I'm allowed to share more. But it was such a tremendous conversation that took place yesterday. These are special times, beloved people. These are extraordinary times. These are tremendous times also dreadful and fearful times in the church because finally the messengers of heaven are walking here and the sovereign God at his will he is now commissioning them navigating them and he is empowering them and sending them to execute the mission and the agenda of the Lord at this hour and that agenda is revival, revival, revival the end time glory the latter anointing and using that visitation, the latter anointing, and latter glory, to prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. So may those who have ears listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. 